Hello everybody, welcome to Little Woolly Things. Today is Monday, February 4th, 2018, and I am out here on my deck because it is so beautiful out here. I just didn't even want to sit in the house. Um, yeah, I can't believe that it's February and it's like 60 degrees outside. So I'm going to take advantage of it and try and soak up a little vitamin D before I have to get back inside and be productive again. Anyway, uh, boy, today has been a Monday, really. But it's not been too bad. Um, it's just that when I woke up, I thought, hey, it's the beginning of the week, let's get stuff done. And then I remembered that uh, we had other plans. I needed to go with the kids and help my mother-in-law get her house cleaned up and ready for company. And um, so I figured that was going to take, you know, a great big chunk of the day. And it did. And it was fine. It's just that it wasn't the first thought in my mind when I woke up. You know, I was thinking, oh, we're going to do this and this and this and this and this. And then I thought, no, no, we're not. <laughs> That's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> so anyway, um, and so just when I was getting my brain wrapped around um, going out to the ranch and helping mom and dad, uh, then my my daughter came back in the house. She had just gone out to get in her car and go to class because she's um, a college student. And um, she said, my car won't start. I don't know what to do. And um, it seems like it's maybe her battery is dead, but we can't figure out why. So anyway, I, um, you know, made sure all the little kids were fed and jumped in the car and took her to class and um, then called my mother-in-law you know, with my little Bluetooth headset, I was, I was not breaking the law, <laughs> and said, I'm sorry we're not there yet. I had to take Connie to class. So, um, yeah, that was a different kind of start to the day, but it's okay. You know, it's been a good day. We, I came back here and picked up the kids. We went out to the ranch, and we helped do some cleaning and scrubbing and packing and getting some stuff ready to go to storage unit, and, um, we thought we were done, and then we looked around a little more, and I thought, are you sure you're done with us? And she said, well, maybe not. So we ended up doing some more scrubbing and cleaning, and, and that was good because it all needed to get done. Um, and as I was scrubbing her deck, I was thinking, hmm, I should go home and do this at my house, <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway, ah, so besides all that, um, believe it or not, this is a knitting and crochet podcast. <laughs> mostly. I sometimes do some other crafty things that I like to show off here as well. Um, right now, since I'm outside, I hope that we're not um, too disturbed by noises. My dog's out there barking at the chickens because that's his favorite thing to do. Um, my kids are down the hill playing because the sun is shining and, you know, we haven't seen the sun very much. Well, we've seen it more this winter than we normally do. And I'm a little bit concerned about fire danger this summer. Um, we are in rural Oregon in um, an area that gets very hot and dry in the summertime and we have lots of fire danger um, warnings. And we actually, we were not in an area that was evacuated last summer, but it was very, very smoky here from all of the fires and I'm just afraid that we're gonna have more but that's not happening today today it's 60 degrees it's beautiful the kids are playing in the creek and the dogs out barking at the chickens and I think you can hear trucks going by on the highway that's not too far away <laughs> um, but mostly you know I am here surrounded by trees and um, it's just it's such a beautiful day today there goes the dog Anyway, uh, he is, his name is Captain, and he is a beautiful red border collie, and he is about, what did we decide, he is eight years old, and he's a really wonderful dog. Maybe I'll get him to come up here and say hello before I'm done podcasting. So, I did not make any show notes. I am taking full advantage of the sunshine, and I just thought, now is my chance. I'm going to run out, and I'm going to record a podcast. So, um, let's see how that goes. Uh, I do not have my coffee with me that's a problem. However, I'm going to podcast anyway without my coffee. So wish me luck. Um, oh, I will start off with finished objects because I finished my On the Spice Market shawl. Ta-da! 
and I love it so, so much. This was almost entirely knit from stash. There are two yarns in here that were hand spun, and then the rest were just, you know, things that I had accumulated and built up in my stash. Um, I just tried to pick as much as I could of about the same weight of yarn in, you know, a bunch of colors that would work nicely together. You can see that I started started here at the skinny end, worked my way across with this um, taupe. It's actually a very complex color to, to describe. If you have followed my podcast before, you've seen this. Um, anyway, I got to this part right here with the taupe and I ran out. And this was one of my hand spun yarns. So um, I didn't want to unsuccessfully try to match it because you know you would never match it exactly and it would look like you tried to match it <laughs> you ran out of yarn tried to match it and it didn't work so I decided to make it look a little more intentional and I went with this darker brown which was a Barocco vintage um, yarn and I cannot remember the name of the colorway not for anything but anyway, I like the way it turned out. Um, I ended up doing the stripes between these colored um, bands, the, the ac accent stripe uh, worked from the wrong side because of where I was when I ran out of this green color. Uh, I happened to be on the wrong side of it, but I thought, you know, well, I'm just gonna work it backwards and see how it looks. And I kind of like it. It's a neat look. It still defines a separation between the colors. Um, I would like to work this again someday and do those accent stripes on the correct side of the shawl. But I really love it. This is a Melanie Berg pattern, if you didn't know. And um, it is wonderful and it is so warm and so squishy and just wonderful. It's a little bit scratchy because some of this uh, hand spun is, you know, it's not merino, I don't know what it is. Um, it's not super wash, it has not been specially processed. It's scratchy wool, but it's very warm. And if I wear this over, you know, a long sleeve shirt that has a higher neckline than this one, I can wrap it up, wrap up in it. And even if it's on my neck, I mean, it's a little scratchy, but it's not driving me crazy. So um, yes, I'm very, very pleased with this. And I love the way my colors blended together and it just makes me happy. So that's a good thing. Okay. And I think that is my only finished object to show you. So I will go on to works in progress. Um, if you have been following the podcast, thank you very much for coming back. I appreciate that more than you can possibly know. Um, I have my socks that I have been working from the sock blank that I dyed. And oh my goodness, I got yarn going everywhere. Okay, so tip number one, when you're working from a sock blank, start at the proper end. I did not, but I decided to, to stick with that because of the way I laid the colors and the dye. Um, I have more green at one end and I wanted that to be at the top of my socks and I like to work my socks from the toe up. So that meant working it from the wrong end of the sock blank. Working from the wrong end of the sock plank is not impossible. It just makes it more of a process knit <laughs> because you have to stop every two rows or so and, um, and untangle so that you can pull from the sock plank better. So anyway, this is what I've got so far. I don't have any sock blockers, sorry. And this is out in here in the daylight. It's um, a little bit blown out, I think, but maybe not too badly. Whoops, there went my sock blank down to the floor. So I will show you what I have left of the sock blank. I have this much of it left. And so I have this beautiful indigo mottled tone for the bird and this nice little green tone for the leaves and branches and the sky blue for the background. And you can see all those colors worked out here in the sock. See that, that was a bluebird once. <laughs> and that was a leaf. <laughs> So actually, I am, I'm about to the length of the foot going up the, the body of the sock. 
the leg portion. I'm just going to keep going as far as I can with this and see how tall the socks get. I really, really love knee-high socks. I'm hoping that this gets to be about knee-high length. So that is uh, whip number one, and it's, it's getting close to being finished. But this one I'm not in a hurry on. I don't have um, any sort of a timetable for getting this finished. Well, it sounds like one of my neighbors is cutting some firewood or something. Oh, I hope that's not too noisy, but whatever. Just going to go with it. <laughs> um, so I bought that sock blank from Knit Picks, and um, I dyed it using, mm, it was a tie-dye kit that I bought at Michael's, tulip, tulip tie-dye maybe, um, and so it was a kit that ca came with those three colors. Mm, it might have come with more colors than that. I don't know, my kids have been on a tie-dye t-shirt kick lately. And so any excuse that we have, we have to uh, put together a gift for somebody. We go to Michael's and buy some t-shirts and do tie-dye. Because, <laughs> you know, each time we do it, we get a little bit better at it and um, a little more skillful in placing the colors where we want them. So it's a lot of fun. And anyway, I, we had some leftover dye after doing a, a t-shirt project. And so I thought, hey, why don't I just put it in this sock blank and see what happens? Um, and I had a stencil with the bird and the leaves and everything. And, and um, I did actually get on YouTube and watch some tutorial videos about dyeing yarn um, and hand, you know, the hand painted technique and how to thicken the dye so that it doesn't just spread out everywhere. So, anyway, YouTube is wonderful. I love all the things that you can learn there. Um, I even repaired my KitchenAid mixer one time with the help of a YouTube video and if you know me you know that's like oh my gosh she actually you know picked up tools and fixed something because yeah that is not that's not normal <laughs> uh, anyway <laughs> back to knitting so um, the next project I am going to show you is my so faded sweater and I have been wanting to do this for such a long time. This is totally a knit for myself project. So, I'll just show you. These are the colors, the yarns that I used in the My Cat Walks All Over Me sock kits. This one actually is, um, the top color is vintage from Barnyard Knits. And then, this color, color number two, is my Ginger Cat colorway from Chasing Rabbits Fiber. The next one is the Calico Cat colorway, also from Chasing Rabbits. And the bottom one is the Gray Tabby Cat colorway. And I just, I knew these would blend together perfectly. I am so happy with this. And I am super excited to have a sweater and matching socks. I mean, seriously, how more color coordinated can that be? And they're made with the same yarn. They're going to be matched perfectly. And oh my goodness, it's just, it's just awesome. So for the cat kits, I actually knitted up one, two, three, four, five pairs of those socks. And they're all in these colors, of course. Most of them. Mm, one I did in a different, different yarn. But, um, huh. It's going to be so much fun to wear with my denim skirt and my cute little kitty cat socks and it's all going to match and I just can't wait. Yay! So that's going to be finished soon because I have been knitting obsessively on this. Um, yeah, really. I'm using my Knit Picks um, interchangeable needles here. And then my I'm using my Tulip interchangeable needle ca cables to hold the stitches for the sleeves. Um, and these, these little ends here are so, they're holding on so well. I'm really impressed. Every once in a while I have to check to make sure they're not coming unscrewed. Um, they're staying nice and tight. I'm really impressed with a Tulip, Tulip brand interchangeable bamboo needles. Very, very nice product. Um, if you like bamboo needles, yeah, I would not hesitate to buy those. Um, so, let's see, oh, talking of, speaking of kitty cat kits, 
if you purchased the kits, I will be um, receiving the yarn any day. I mean, I checked my mail today half expecting to get a package slip saying my yarn was here. Um, my goodness, the dog is being noisy. Anyway, those will be shipped out soon. If you did not get in on the pre-orders for the kitty cat sock kits, I still have um, some extra skeins of the yarn that will be available. So uh, either message me, uh, email me, wendy at kleinart.com, or um, message me on Etsy. My Etsy shop is Little Wooly Things. Um, you can contact me on Instagram, Little Wooly Things there too. Um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> if you are interested in get, buying any of these yarns, they are exclusive to my kit, um, and I can, I can set you up. I also have the pattern available on Etsy, in my Etsy shop, and also in my Ravelry store. So there are lots of ways that you can get in on this project if you like it, and um, I would be more than happy to, to get you going on it. So what else do I have to talk about today? Hmm. There's not a whole lot right now to talk about. Uh, I could launch into a philosophical treatise, but I think I might save that for another podcast. Some of the thoughts that have been banging around in my head lately uh, may work their way into a new shawl design, thinking about it. Um, I have some things in the works. We were just uh, on vacation for a few days. Um, up in a cabin in the snow, and I spent a lot of time knitting all on my so faded sweater. Um, but it also gives gives time for just ruminating, thinking about things. You know, the kids were outside sledding, playing in the snow, having fun, and, and I just got to sit and drink my coffee and knit, and it was really a wonderful break. Um, now we're home and back into the swing of things and back at, you know, all the normal stuff of life and, um, you know, it's, it's almost springtime and we were doing spring cleaning at the ranch and I got to do some spring cleaning here at home. <laughs> and, um, yeah, hubby and I are talking about building a coffee roaster out of a, a barbecuer that he bought me for my birthday specifically to, to build into a coffee roaster. Um, yeah, he bought me a rotisserie attachment for it for Christmas, and then we started looking at the specs on the motor, realized it wouldn't turn fast enough to roast coffee beans, so then, you know, we're having to figure out what to do instead of that, because that was the plan, um, so now we're having to figure out plan B for that. Um, and I will certainly show off the coffee roaster when we get it done, if we ever get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. Um, yeah, I, I love roasting coffee. If you've watched the podcast, you know that. Uh, and actually, I'm going to be roasting some coffee tomorrow, but not on the barbecuer because it's not ready yet. So I will be um, working on it the, the old-fashioned way with my whirly pop popcorn popper on my stovetop. Um, anyway... I'm going to be roasting some Mexican coffee, which makes the best iced cold brew coffee. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So maybe I will have to have some of that for my next podcast. Mmm, it's so good. <laughs> uh, let's see. I watched a new to me podcast last night, uh, The Fat Squirrel Speaks. That was fun. So um, if you have never watched that podcast, I highly recommend it. It's very enjoyable. Uh, I nearly laughed out loud and woke up my husband, which not such a good idea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because I watch podcasts at night after everyone else is asleep. And I just knit away, you know, especially working on the body of a stockinette sweater where, you know, there's not much thought involved. Um, I have already faded in the last color. I don't even have to think about how many stripes of each color I've done. I'm just knitting, 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 knitting. And um, so it's nice to have a podcast to watch. It's kind of like hanging out with a friend and 
and um, visiting and you know keeping your hands busy at the same time. By the time the podcast is done, you look at what you've done. You've you know all the knitting that you've done, and it's like, wow, where did that come from? <laughs> it's so much fun. I love it. So anyway, um, yeah, I hope that I can hang out with you while you're working on your projects, and we can just chit chat and uh, work on things and talk knitting and and uh, enjoy each other's company. I think I've run out of things to say. I think. Pretty much. So it must be time to sign off. Anyway, uh, hello from Oregon. Goodbye. I will see you next time. Enjoy the wonderful spring weather that I hope you're having as well as I am. And I uh, will talk to you later. Bye. Here's Tony. Hi, puppy. And there's Captain. Good boy. <laughs> Tony, come on. Hey, Captain. Hi. Good boy.